Ah, uh, yes. A tribute video to the first three Pokemon games. No one's done this before! That's why we're gonna set you aside and play something else. <laughs> and, uh, none of my consoles are on. Let me just switch to the PS3. That doesn't even make any sense! Let's begin. <laughs> Pokemon Yellow. God, I love this game. Memories, memories, redefine childhood. Uh, I'll spare you the details. Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow exist in what I like to call the Pokemon Time Capsule. These games established many of the motifs the series beat like a dead horse in every game afterward. But since they're the first games in the series, they are impervious to any faults. What a load of crap. I'll always recommend red, blue, or yellow to first-time Pokemon players. Not only are they way simpler to learn, playing recent entries afterwards gives you a greater appreciation for how far the series has actually come. Pokemon Yellow differs from Red and Blue by following the TV show a bit more closely. Yeah, remember the TV show? Oh, you don't? That's okay, only 90s kids will understand. This doesn't boil down to much other than Jesse and James showing up a few times to get their asses kicked and Pikachu playing tag along. Really glad they thought outside the box on this one. The game begins with the classic rat as your starter Pokemon. No, seriously. You don't get a choice. Whereas in Red and Blue, players chose between Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Charmander. Because that's how Ash's journey started. <laughs> While this lack of choice might seem like a hindering aspect of Pokemon Yellow, you receive all three of these Pokemon later on in the game. Which, in my opinion, makes the other two games kinda worthless. So we have our hero, which sets out from the quaint village of Pallet Town with his goal to be the best. No one ever was. Challenging the eight gyms of the Kanto region, which grants access to the Elite Four, Kanto's most powerful trainers. Along the way, we collect these little monsters called Pokemon, which possess elemental powers and are capable of destroying cities. <laughs> Honey, cancel our trip! An evil group bent on underground Pokemon trafficking called Team Rocket is also placed in the story to give our hero a bit more of a purpose than just walking from town to town and battling. What's odd is there are questions never answered which would have made the game much more interesting and deep. Why do Pokemon fight for these humans? What's the connection? How did Team Rocket get started up? Why haven't Pokemon just killed humans since they obviously possess the power to? And, uh... <laughs> Where's your father? Hey mom, where's dad? All boys leave home someday. It says so on the TV. Mom, kinda experiencing a midlife crisis right now? Where's my dad? Oh, did your Pokemon need healing? I can take care of that for you. Mom! You're going to be such a powerful trainer someday. Just like your fu- Just like my what? Many RPGs have a deep story to drive the player forward while they're endlessly leveling to progress. Pokemon doesn't care about that. Much of the game is pretty surface level with what's shown, but you still feel as though you're taking part in an epic adventure thanks to the omnipresence of Team Rocket, badges that need to be collected, and new areas to explore. Even so, it would have been nice to see Yellow deviate just a bit more from the story of the original two games and really give players something different. How's that Pikachu meat taste? 
Oh, you thought I'd been depositing your friends in the PC. Well, they're all gone. And I'm so hungry. The defining factor for Pokemon Yellow is... Brace yourselves! This. Yep. The Pikachu that Professor Oak catches and pity gives you after your rival steals the freaking Eevee you were gonna get. What the f- Give me that Eevee, you little scum! Want a battle for it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't mean with our Pokemon. You can check on Pikachu throughout the game to see its emotional state, whether it likes, hates, or is indifferent towards you. The little rat follows everywhere you go unless he's deposited in a PC. This was a cute Tamagotchi-like feature that, while benefiting the game, needed improvement. First of all, Pikachu is the only Pokemon that'll follow behind you in this fashion. If I say, put a Pidgey as my first party member, it won't be flapping behind me anytime soon. Limiting a great feature like this to only Pikachu is a waste. Since doing this for multiple Pokemon, at least the other three starters, would have helped Yellow stand out more. We then have the Potion Conundrum. Yellow is programmed in such a way that if an item's used to heal Pikachu, it'll automatically like you a little more. But the same effect will still happen even if you attempt to heal him when he has full health. So once you get a Pikachu, if he's at his peak and you have a potion or any other healing type item, you can use it continuously to max out his happiness. Hey, at least we know Pikachu's male. He's actually easy to please. Oh, and uh, you can't evolve him. Duh, but Ash in the TV show didn't evolve his Pikachu. I don't give a shit about the TV show! This is a game! So to evolve Pikachu, which, by the way, there are no other Pikachu you can catch in Pokemon Yellow, you have to trade it away to someone else, have them use a Thunderstone to evolve it, and then peg for it back. What's even worse is once you get your Raichu back, now it won't follow behind you anymore. What the fuck? I would have understood including a feature like this if the Pikachu you got from Oak had way better stats than a normal Pikachu. But it has the exact same stats. In the PC you go, Yuzel's rat. For those of you not familiar with Pokemon... Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I thought. The gist of the games is to catch a Pokemon, battle to make it stronger, and then try and kick your friends' asses with your team. <laughs> or... trade, I guess. In battle, players take turns attacking and are allowed to have six Pokemon on their party, but only one out at a time, with each Pokemon having an assigned type, such as fire, water, or grass. Each of these attributes has at least one weakness. Grass is weak to fire, fire is weak to water, and so on. Pokemon battles are built to be balanced in this way, with no certain type really outclassing every other one without a check existing that can beat it. And then we have Red, Blue, and Yellow. The first generation games were never meant to be competitively balanced. That is obvious. Certain Pokemon get straight up outclassed by others. Wanna know which two Pokemon have some of the worst stats in the entire game? Butterfree and Beedrill. Two fan favorites are complete trash. Even Ivysaur has better stats than these two. What? There are 15 different Pokemon types, but ones like Ghost, Bug, and Dragon don't have any good damaging moves. Not to mention the two actual good bug types, Scyther and Pinsir, don't learn any bug moves. Listen, this section could go on for years, but I'll leave you with this. Red, Blue, and Yellow were the experimental phase, and ever since then, the entire series has only improved and gotten more complex. In a good way. That doesn't mean the first three games are complete rubbish, they just provide a good starting point for beginners. The most beautiful thing a game can do is connect you with other people. Pokemon accomplishes this by allowing friends to use a link cable for trading and battling. Yeah, this was before all your fancy technology. You could link up with other players to gloat about your level 100s, battle your friends, and trade creatures from game to game. Red, blue, and yellow have different Pokemon in them, so connecting with others was a must if you wanted the full experience. <laughs> Unless you had a Game Shark, then there's no reason to have actual friends. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Bro, Generation 1 had the best Pokemon. You're only saying that because it's the only game you've played. 
No, it's not. The Pokemon's for fags anyways. You wanna play some Club Penguin? From designs that are easily forgotten to ones that just look terrible. Red, blue, and yellow actually stand as one of the least interestingly designed generations out there, in my opinion. Everything seems to be highly derivative of something else, or is shaped like a ball. Seriously, look at this. Call me crazy, but I prefer a lot of the designs from generations 3 and 5. Come at me, haters. If you've never played a Pokemon game, now's the time to jump in. With these three games getting re-released on the 3DS eShop, you can take a look back at where this series started and gain a greater understanding for why it became so popular. Yeah, the games do suffer from some imbalance, the story is a bit straightforward, and the graphics are, <laughs> well... But it really is simple, easy to learn fun. Now if you'll so politely excuse me, I have some dinner to finish. Nip it out. <laughs> Looks like you made it to the end. For more nitpicking, check out the Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival review or my Top 10 Annoying Zelda Enemies video. I also have a secondary channel where I upload other random videos called Nitpick Plus. And a huge thanks to my pal Jake for helping me out with this one. Be sure to tune in in a couple weeks for some more nitpicking. See you soon.